because several people can't join us, so we'll um, kick it off that way. So good morning, good afternoon, wherever you're coming from. Thanks for joining the third webinar of 2022 for Earth Gives and Earth Gives Day. We're just thrilled to have you. We're having some technology challenges, as in I had to rebuild the PowerPoint this morning um, with some colleagues, and there's a little bit of issues with even my Zoom ability, so it's going to be a bit wonky. When I put up the PowerPoint to show you a few things, I'm not going to be able to see you, so forgive me if you have questions, put it in the chat, you know, or whatever. I mean, I'll be able to hear you, but I, I might not be able to see facial expression, so if you're going to <laughs> make faces have at it. Um, I'm joined here today with by uh, Josh Abed Louis-Jean from Neon One. They're the giving day platform that we work with, the technology support system that makes this all possible. Um, I'm going to kind of introduce a little bit more about me and actually I'm going to jump in and answer some questions right off the top and then we're going to go to our agenda because I know several people who registered had questions and we're all coming in at different levels and different levels of understanding so sometimes I want to uh, serve uh, the questions that people have right off the top um, and then if I repeat a little bit of it there's nothing wrong with that since many of you are sort of new like um, Grant and um, Rob R and potentially some others. So uh, Rhonda Bannard, um, founder and executive director of Earth Gives um, and Earth Gives Day, which is our signature event. Um, I'm based here in Phoenix, Arizona. Years back when I was chair of the Alliance of Arizona Nonprofits Board of Directors, we started Arizona Gives Day. And so that's part of how I come to this. So I'm familiar with um, giving days, um, yet have always believed that the opportunity to move from uh, transactional to transformational is, is a huge opportunity. I, I firmly believe in community building um, and engagement, and um, that's where we are hoping to actually move this initiative forward. Um, so fast forward a couple years ago, and I was very inspired by um, some youth climate activists, um, as well as my own young adult children to say, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? How can I be of service? And this is when I thought, well, what about a giving day for the environment? And as I did the research into the level of philanthropy, for organizations like yours, I was horrified knowing that this is the most consequential issue of our time. And as you all know, I mean, I just said that I'm coming in from Arizona. Well, we're in the 27th year of a long-term drought. There are um, water fights going on now between the Colorado River water and what's been happening. And so it is very, clear um, that we are in uh, beyond crisis mode, and yet we have the opportunity to build community and come together. And you'll see with some statistics that I've got in the, in the, um, in the PowerPoint presentation that I think the timing is right to be able to invite people in. So Alex, thanks for joining us. If you want to put in the chat where you're coming in from and who you're with, that would uh, be wonderful. Uh, let me let me jump in, like I said, about uh, some of the questions. So several of the questions that those who registered had was, what is this? What is this organization about? I want to better understand it. What Josh Abed and I have talked about after some feedback in previous webinars on register, how to register your nonprofit, and then how to use fundraising tools, which um, are in the email that you would have received the, the old recordings. Nice to see you coming in from New Mexico. Great to have you. Um, that, that sometimes we needed to back up to explain a little bit about this, what this is. So people who understand what a giving day is uh, can kind of step right in. Others don't really understand what it is. So Earth Gives Day is actually the first nationwide single issue giving day focused specifically on 501c3 organizations whose missions are in the environmental, environmental justice, and climate space. 
Okay, so it's specific to those area areas. And we know that um, there is a diverse spectrum of missions and areas of focus, which we think is an opportunity to share because a lot of people feel overwhelmed when it comes to climate or the environment. They don't know where to begin, where to start. We feel like this is sort of, a, well, I might not be exactly comfortable with using this comparison. Comparison, it's sort of an Amazon shopping opportunity for donors to sort of reinvest and invest and discover other um, missions and organizations doing the work that they might care about, whether it's deeply local to their area or mission specific, um, I would say. So that's what we're hoping to do, but then to, to back it up with storytelling and with community building initiatives that will um, begin to follow on. So my background um, started in television news. Um, and so I'm in, I've been steeped in the storytelling world. I've spent you know, 30 plus years in public relations and marketing, fundraising. Um, I've worked within traditional nonprofits, within business nonprofits, and then um, has, have served clientele for the last 20 plus years um, as a consultant to a variety of nonprofits. So I come at this not from a, an expertise in the environment or sustainability. I come at it from an expertise of we've got to do something. How do we build community? How do we bring people in? How do we message to make this an easy way to invite folks in um, to join in and identify as an earth giver when 2% of environmental philanthropy is just not gonna cut it when it comes to action. And we certainly don't want people to think that the Inflation uh, Reduction Act and all the climate goodies that are in there are going to fix everything. We want everyone to become um, part of the fixing. So a giving day is a, is a platform where you come in, a nonprofit registers, it, it probably takes you about 15 minutes for the first stage. You get approved, you have to upload your IRS determination letter, you get approved, then you are sent to the next stage and said you're approved, and then you add in a few more um, pieces of data, like links to um, social media and bank, and then there is a registration fee. We are a startup nonprofit, so that just slightly offsets some of the expenses that, that we're incurring for working with Neon One and um, supporting um, the organization and the initiative in other ways. So that's what it is. And then it's a condensed 24 hour, usually um, sort of swirl of effort that happens. And uh, oftentimes because it's geographically situated, it is within a state or a smaller region. Well, we bit off a lot when it comes to the giving day. And so we are, we are thankful and we also want to um, request a little bit of your patience, knowing that you're part of the early, early stage of this to co-create this massive movement. It's just the same with Giving Tuesday. I mean, they started by generating about you know, $12 million, which would be awesome for us, but generating that, and now they're up to over half a billion dollars. So as you know, even your organization, somebody had a dream, somebody had a vision, that's what we're working towards. And only together um, can we invite all the others to participate in, in, in what Earth Gives Day and shaping people I, who identify as Earth Givers together. So that's a little bit about what it is. There is an early giving stage that happens in September on September 15th. So there are modes that the earthgives.org platform functions in. Right now, I'm not gonna probably use the lingo that Josh Abed would use, but it's in registration mode. It's, it's in the mode inviting nonprofits to register and it's going through that process. And then it's going to cut off that option and people as long as they're in through the first stage of being approved as a 501c3 they can make a last minute decision to pay the fee 
and then activate their profile page. So it's a mini web site or profile page, as we call it, that showcases your organization, that has a ticker about how much you're raising, that has your socials and easy to share and a unique URL that allows you to share it out there or anyone who gives to you to share it. And we're gonna talk about another tool, what's called a P2P or a fundraising page um, of how you can get more people to help you share and make it go viral super simply. That's what is the unique nature of a giving day platform. It, it can be shared very easily for your volunteers, for your vendors, for your board members, whoever they may be, um, to help it go viral. Um, they're also, giving days are also gamified. And so while we've got several thousand dollars already committed, we're gonna to continue to work on that and we can continue to raise that money up into, I think, October 6th, which is the giving day. And so once the giving day goes live, which means donors can actually start to give to your organization on September 15th, you are competing sort of, um, to win additional dollars on top of the donations that you're already getting. Uh, and there are new tools that have been added. We're going to be accepting for the first time ever, we're gonna be part of the beta test for Apple Pay and Google Pay. So donors can really give a donation very simply. We're also um, going to be part of something that's called repeat your donation. So for those who have participated in our inaugural year, any donor that donated to you will get an email that says, hey, you gave this much to Reap Goodness or Big Ben, would you like to repeat your donation? And it's literally a one click, they can continue to shop and do other things um, as well and discover others because the average donor gives to between three to five nonprofits, 80% of the fees, or actually in our case, 86% of donors covered any credit card fees, um, you know, that are charged through the system. So your donation goes higher. And we have what's called the green them all fund. Green them all is that checkout yeah. for the donor. So when they're checking out, it says, would you like to add an additional $20 or more that will be shared across every nonprofit that is participating. And we got a lot of that money. And so every nonprofit took away, it covered their registration fee for the small nonprofits and it offset the medium and large nonprofit fees um, through the Green Them All Fund. And so even in our inaugural year, that's what occurred. So I went very quickly through a lot of the very basics. And now I'm going to um, share my screen. I, I'm like I said, because of some technology issues, I'm not able to maybe see you. So certainly use the chat. Um, and we're going to go from there. And then Josh Abed will um, take over early on um, uh, to share a few of the basic things to reinforce how to register um, and how to use your um, your fundraising tools. So that's what we're going to do. Refresher registration and fundraising tools with Josh Abed from Neon One. Then I'm going to go into a little bit of the marketing and outreach, a little bit of messaging, and then we're going to answer any questions that you might have. So Josh Abed, uh, now it's your turn <laughs> to take this over and run with it. Let me know if you need me to stop sharing. There you go. And I think you might be on mute. So sorry. Okay. <laughs> Apologies. Can everybody <laughs> hear me and see my screen? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, okay. So thank you so much, Rhonda, for that intro. Um, as Rhonda said, my name is Josh Beth Luisa, and I'm working for Neon One, the technology platform partner for Earth Gives. Um, so I wanted to give uh, just a very brief refresher on how to register. So in case um, you haven't gone through the registration process, um, it's important to note um, that there's sort of two parallel tracks. So there's um, one way for new organizations and um, there's a 
similar but sort of slightly different process for returning organizations. So um, either type of organization, you'll begin by navigating to earthgives.org. And um, so we're on the homepage now. And so um, you'll hover over the login at the top right hand of the screen and uh, choose nonprofit. So if I am a new organization, I will click uh, here for apply as a new organization. So let's do that now. Um, so the first step is for the system to check that you don't already have a, an account that's linked to your email address. So I'll just put in a sample um, email address um, just so we can have a look at what the eligibility or um, inquiry form looks like. So put in your email address twice. Um, and if you do not already have an account uh, linked to your email address, it'll take you to this eligibility or inquiry form. So this is for brand new organizations who didn't participate last year. You'll fill in all of the required fields that are marked with a red asterisk. Um, do it to the best of your ability, but please note, um, you will have an opportunity to make changes to that information um, later on in the process. Uh, important to note here is you'll have to put in a custom URL um, so this will just give you a, a, a bit of customization in the URL that links to your nonprofit's profile on the EarthGives site. So yeah, as I said, you'll fill in all of the um, required fields. And when you're ready to proceed, you will click um, submit to submit your inquiry form. So once submitted, you'll receive two uh, emails, an email to confirm that your inquiry or eligibility form has been submitted to the EarthGives team for their review. And you'll receive another email uh, prompting you to create a password for your account. So once you've created your password, um, you would go back to the EarthGives site. Um, again, go to the login and click nonprofit. And here's where the process sort of merges for the new and the returning organizations. So once, if you're a new organization who's now uh, filled out and submitted your inquiry or eligibility form, or you're a returning organization that wants to submit your registration for this year, either way, you'll return to this screen and click log in as a returning organization. So I already have a test account that I'll just log into here. And you'll see, sorry, you will see this screen. So this screen will take you directly to your registration um, form. So if you are a new organization this year, the information will be pulled directly from your eligibility or inquiry form. So you'll just make sure that the information is still correct, um, update anything that needs to be updated. If you are a returning organization, this information is pulled from your profile from last year. So again, same process at this point, you'll check that the information is correct, up to date, nothing needs to be changed, no fields, uh, no new fields are required. And once you are um, satisfied with how it looks, you will, um, I'll have to sign here. Um, you can either save the form to return to it later, or um, once you're ready, you can submit and pay your registration fee. So uh, important to note also is that the um, system will let you know if you are missing required fields. So I'll just go back and make sure to um, upload required information, check out all of the required fields, and now I can submit and pay my registration fields. So here's where you'll have the opportunity to um, either enter in your credit card information or your bank account information to pay your registration fee. So um, won't take the time now to do that, but that's how um, the system would go through for you. So I'm going to do a little behind the scenes magic um, to get my um, organization um, registered so that we can see what it would look like uh, for a registered organization. Please bear with me. Feel free also to uh, hop on mic and ask any questions if you'd like me to slow down. Mm 
So I will, oops, sorry. I will log back in as my test organization now. Great so, question, um, Grant. Uh, for small nonprofits, it's fifty dollars. For medium, it's ninety. For um, large nonprofits over a million dollars, it's uh, one hundred and fifty. And like I said, the Green Them All Fund offsets some of that. Yep. Thank you. And as far as the price fund, while well, Josh Abed is bringing up some things, I mentioned the price fund um, uh, and updating things. We did have a couple nonprofits who didn't have their bank accounts right, so we couldn't transfer the money to them. And so we reached out and some nonprofits had changed banks and done some things like that. So either way, we're going to know if it's not working and getting to the right account, but it is really important that you get that information right. And what she's probably not going to touch on is that you're going to be able to download Excel spreadsheets on all the donors that came to you. You're going to have their contact information. You're going to know how much they gave you. There's automation on thank yous and all those kinds of things. So the system really just does the work for you. Um. Okay, um, so I've re-logged in as my test organization as the nonprofits so of both the returning and the new nonprofits at this point. Um, so as you can see um, in the upper right hand corner, my status has been updated from registration required to approved. Um, so if at any point in the process you are in doubt of where your organization lands in the process, um, go ahead and log in to your admin dashboard and you'll find um, an update right here. So just a bit about the dashboard while we're on here. So um, the dashboard provides key information right as you log in, right? So we have some key dates for Earth Gives 2022. In addition, if you scroll down, um, when you submit registration, you'll have the opportunity to update any goals that you have. Um, you also have the opportunity um, to press the button that says, no thanks, I'll do it later. So at any point in the process, if, you have, uh, if you'd like to update your event goals, your matching fund goals, your early giving donations, and your peer-to-peer -peer fundraising goals, you can do that here, even on um, Gives Day. In addition, while I'm here, click into a few of these tabs. So your public profile um, gives you an idea of what your profile will look like uh, pushed out publicly on the earthgives.org site. Um, you can make edits to it here, um, even after your registration is approved. In addition, you may feel like you want to upload um, donation levels. So this is a good example for donors to know exactly what type of things their money can do. So if it's $10 to buy a book bag, for example, you can set that as a donation level that donors can then choose at checkout. Um, they're not obligated to choose those donation levels. Again, it's just a, a way to um, be really specific about what their funds can do. Um, multimedia section is where you can upload photos or videos. Um, there's some um, restrictions on the size and um, your video should be already uploaded on YouTube or Vimeo so that you can post the link um, to that here. Uh, in addition, you can upload uh, information on programs for that your organization is hosting and events for your organization. You can advertise your uh, volunteer opportunity, um, your specific needs, and um, there's also a place uh, sort of in the background that you can upload documents. Um, in addition, if you click to my fundraiser, so I'll skip ahead a little bit uh, since we're here. Um, so if you are a, a nonprofit um, colleague, here is where you would create your peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising page. So if you click create fundraiser, it'll open up the peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page editing tool. Um, here's where you would enter in your title. Um, you would set your custom URL. Um, you can set a financial goal. You can upload um, an image and you can share a bit of your um, fundraising story to explain um, why you're creating this page, uh, what you're hoping to accomplish through your gift day. Um, when you are ready to publish, you'll click save fundraiser and that'll publish your peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising page. So that's 
just the view for you as the nonprofit um, user to create fundraising pages. Josh, um, can I yeah. um, see if we can clarify that? So the nonprofit can go in and they can set up a fundraising page because it can be a default that anybody, they can allow anybody to use, right? It's like they can copy and paste it. I'm a donor, I'm a supporter or a volunteer and I want to come in and I want to do, I want to help raise money for Earth Gives Day for Big Bend Conservancy, for example. So I can go in and tap that page, right? And save it and upload my own photo of me out doing work, you know, out at Big Bend National Park. Um, and then I can say why I'm raising money for the organization, correct? Um, so this process, what we're looking at now is just for people who have access to the uh, nonprofit's dashboard. So usually that'll just be people that work with you. The process for creating a fundraising page as a donor or supporter, someone on the outside of your organization um, is slightly different. And um, I can go over that once we're done looking at the nonprofit profile. Okay. Um, but yeah, essentially it's, it's quite easy for your uh, donors and supporters to create uh, those fundraising pages for you. It's just a slightly different process that we'll look at a bit later. Okay, so the, I just wanna be clear because mm -hmm. Um, it, you know, if I have slight questions, um, perhaps other people do too. Sure. For a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser, somebody on the team might want to do their own because let's say they personally have uh, a pretty good social media following and they mm -hmm. might want to do their own. So in that instance, that's why they might set up a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser when they're already a part of the organization. It just... Right adds to the virality of the sharing of asking for donations, correct? Yes, exactly. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you. Yeah, um, of course. So um, yeah, still looking from the nonprofit uh, view. While you're here, you can um, click uh, view public page that will take you directly to your fundraising page on the Earth Gives public site. Um, in addition, if you uh, click on these three dots to the right, you have the option to edit your fundraiser. So that takes you back to the fundraising editing tool um, exactly to your page. So any changes you make here um, and then save will show up on your um, public page. So you can see I, I added 2022 here and it shows up almost simultaneously onto my page. Um, in addition, you can copy your fundraiser. So um, with this uh, new way, um, new-ish way of doing fundraising tools, um, so we no longer have templates, which would be sort of something that you would send out um, that people can use with the same photo and sort of slightly update the fundraising story, maybe change the goal, those things. Um, so we don't have the templates for external users, but internally for your nonprofits, you can sort of create a template where if you upload an image that you like, that you want other people on your staff to use, um, then they can, you'll save this fundraiser and then instruct everybody on your staff who has access to your dashboard to click that copy fundraiser. And so that will copy this exact fundraiser and they can make their minor edits and then republish it as a, as a new fundraiser. Um, in addition, um, you as the nonprofit can view donations made to any uh, fundraising page that's been linked to your nonprofit. So if there were any donations, here's where I would see the transaction date, the first name and last name and email address of the donor, and then the amount that they gave. Um, and if the list is long, I can click export and it will export that information as an Excel sheet that you can then use um, offline for um, like those thank you notes and, and sharing and donor lists and things like that. Finally, you as the nonprofit always reserve the right to deactivate any um, fundraising pages that are linked to your nonprofit. Um, once you click deactivate, it will be pulled from the public site. Um, it will uh, live on in the back end. Um, if you go under fundraiser status and you click deactivated, it'll show all of the deactivated pages that are linked to your nonprofit. Um, but we keep it um, defaulted to publish. So you can see the ones that are current and published and linked to your nonprofit now. Um, in addition, still looking at the um, dashboard for nonprofits, 
You can also uh, find the all time an all time list of donations made um, to your organization. Um, these are all test organizations or sorry test donations from last year. Again, you can export um, that information to an Excel sheet. Um, in the My User section, this is where you would control the members of your staff that have access to this information. So clicking Add a New User um, and then entering first name, last name, and email address of your staff member um, will make it so that they get an email address, or sorry, they get an email prompting them to create a password. And from then on, they can go into the earthgives.org site and log in as a nonprofit using their credentials, and they'll be able to see all the information that you're able to see. There were a few organizations last year that did have upwards of, I want to say, three people who managed their page or had access to it, put it that way. Yeah. Um, and you have uh, also the option of managing their access. So if you have um, an old colleague who's no longer with you, no longer needs uh, access, you can remove their neon giving days access. If you have a colleague who uh, needs to have this access to the um, dashboard but doesn't want to receive email notifications, um, they can click remove um, on the email notifications. So those email notifications are mainly when a fundraising page has been created linked to your nonprofit or when one of those pages receives a donation, you'll get an email for that. Um, and then finally, the Resource Center um, just has some good information, some articles on how to um, maximize your fundraising efforts. So um, that's it for specifically the registration. And then we also saw the peer-to-peer um, -peer fundraising pages from the nonprofit um, perspective. If everyone's ready, I can show you um, my last bit, which is uh, how to do a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page from the perspective of your donors or supporters. So um, this is uh, hopefully helpful for you when you're um, explaining to your donors and supporters how they can create a fundraising page for you. So you'll tell them to go to earthgives.org um, they can either search for your nonprofit right here, or they can um, browse nonprofits and find you um, here on this page. Um, since I have my test organization now approved, I'll use this one as an example. So um, I am a donor or supporter of uh, the Neon One test organization, and I want to create a fundraising page. So I'm now in their um, nonprofit profile, and I'll click on fundraise. Um, so if they have never um, donated before or created a fundraising page, there's a good chance that they don't have an account. So you'll instruct them to create an account. Uh, so they'll just have to put in their first name, their last name, email address, and um, create a password. So I actually already have an account, so I will... Um, log in as a donor or a fundraiser it's it would take it will take you to the same log in page so i log in using my credentials again find the test organization that i wanted to support click fundraise and um, again i'm taken to that same uh, editing tool page um, as the nonprofit view. So you'll instruct them to enter their title, um, their title, to put in a custom URL, set a financial goal. They can upload an image and they can tell their story. <clears throat> and then again, when they're done and ready to publish, they'll click, just click Save Fundraiser. So there'll be an email that goes out to them to let them know that their fundraising page has been published. Um, it will give them their custom URL right there um, in the email so they can already start sharing that on social media or via email. Um, there is a warning um, that goes out with those emails that uh, it can take up to two hours to publish the page. Luckily in uh, our actual practice, we haven't seen it take that long, but it's just something for them to be aware of. Um, and then you as the nonprofit will receive an email to let you know that 
their uh, fundraising page has been created. So um, as the donor or supporter, I can always check in on, um, if I click on my name up here, it will take me to my account, which has um, all of my information on the donations that I've made whilst um, logged in. So if they don't log in and they make a donation as a guest, it will not show up here. Um, they'll have to be logged in. Um, they can also save their, uh, pro their payment profiles. They can schedule gifts ahead of time. And then here's where they'll find the list of the fundraising pages that they've created. So they won't be able to see the entire list of fundraising pages linked to your nonprofit, just the ones that they created. But from here, they can um, view it. Um, so that brings them to the page on the earthgives.org site. Um, they can also edit it, which again takes them back to that editing tool where they can make changes and then save it at the exact same fundraising page. And then if they hover over the clogs, they, or sorry, after the cog on the um, right hand side, they can view the donations that are made to their page and also export it. Um, and they can copy their fundraiser again, which would make a duplicate uh, fundraising page that they would edit and then publish as a secondary fundraising page. And then finally, they have the option also to deactivate um, their fundraising pages. So that's it um, in terms of registration, a little bit about how to build out your profile and how to manage your dashboard, and then how to create a fundraising page from your perspective as the nonprofit, and then also from the perspective of your donors and supporters. I'm going to um, stop sharing my screen, and I'll leave a space here for questions. Um, if anybody wants to see anything again, I'm happy to, to go over anything again. We also have time at the end to um, ask Josh Abed if any of this makes more sense. So any, any questions? Okay, I'm gonna keep going because we've just got a lot to cover. So here's some key dates and obviously we're recording this. So um, we'll be able to, um, you'll be able to watch this again um, and fast forward as you might need. I just see that Beth from Wild at Heart is joining us. Um, welcome, Beth. Great to see you. Here's the um, Josh Abed just went over uh, how to register and um, fundraising, how to utilize fundraising pages. I'm going to breeze through and get into some marketing and outreach, starting with some key dates. So it's important to remember to get at least the first part of your registration process in there by September 2nd. Um, you can ultimately make the full on decision after that. Um, now through September 12th, um, you know, update your profile, get that up there. You can play around with it. And like Josh Abed said, you're also going to be able to update it all through the giving period um, up until I think probably October 6th. Um, same thing. Now is the time to recruit some fundraising friends. So if you want to expand the virality of, of, of your ability to, to share, and the reason why I'm showing it, showing the slideshow to you in this version, because it wasn't working in full of slideshow. So again, technology um, challenges uh, today. So please bear with me. Um, is, is to recruit them now. And I'm gonna get into a little bit about how to do that and who to go after and who might be able to support you in raising money through Earth Gives and Earth Gives Day. Um, now through September 14th is uh, an opportunity for you to build up a sort of a messaging and outreach plan for you to engage. You could even book um, and plan out some of your social sharing, um, same thing with starting to tease things out September 12th through the 15th. I think it's important to let people get through Labor Day and then we come back and then as we head towards early giving, which is September 15th, you can start teasing it out. And what I mean by that is, what is Earth Gives Day? Why, why do we need to invite more Earth Givers? Um, and sort of some of that framing, and then early giving begins. And so you can literally start taking donations. And Josh Abed, um, this is a really important um, point, and I want to make sure I'm getting it right. 
they can start recruiting fundraising friends to set up a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser as soon as their profile page is filled out, correct? Yes, so your um, supporters and um, staff members, so inside the nonprofit and out can create fundraising pages as soon as your profile is approved. Um, and you can create them um, up to and including on Earth Gives Day on October 6th. That's correct. Thank you for that clarifying that. So early giving begins. All the giving that starts from September 15th through October 6th is eligible for uh, price fund dollars um, and, and you know potentially additional dollars. So just understand. And so if you are able and you've got donors who are interested in giving through donor advice funds or all of those, there is a manual way that we can help you get in that money. Um, same thing with matching dollars. If any dollars you want to count to potentially win prize fund dollars, um, and several organizations did last year, um, work with us and we'll be sending you more information around making sure that we can support you. And the point about having Josh Abed and a whole other team from Neon One is they will help you all, us all, manage through that process and get in those dollars um, for you as we go through the process. We will be sending out a toolkit for you very shortly. We are in the process of still refining it. It's going to have ads that you can literally use that are sort of generic to Earth Gives and Earth Gives Day, as well as very specific that you're gonna be able to drop in your logos and your own unique URL, as well as you can do that within the content that goes with the graphic. We are going to share sample messages that are built off of um, some time-tested understanding of messaging. There's gonna be a template for a press release that you can send to your localized media and certainly hashtags that will allow us to um, you know, make sure that we're amplifying uh, giving and earth givers so they can discover you. Here's an example of one of the ads. So I believe this is, um, not sure what this is size for. Uh, this is Facebook, LinkedIn um, size for. So what you're seeing is one with a logo dropped in. So that's the logo for Western Environmental Law Center, WELC. They were the very first organization that joined Earth Gives Day last year and again this year. Um, and so we use their logo as an example, but they would be able to put their URL also um, under the text and or in the content that would go along with this ad. So this is a sample of what the ads look like. Here's a different variation, probably for Instagram. Um, we're trying to work in and hopefully we'll have a variety of different photos that go along with the various missions that you all support. So you're going to see that they can donate through the 15th through October 6th and then what the logo is. So all giving has to come in through earthgives.org and then you want to send them to that unique URL that Josh Abed talked about. Now we've got a video. It's something we're working on, um, but we hope uh, you kind of like where it's headed. Um, and these are the kinds of things that we're working on behind the scenes to pull this um, template together um, so that you have some tools um, to amplify the message about um, inviting people in to become Earth Givers. This is a little over a minute long, so let's take a look.
Okay, so definitely some tweaks, but you can kind of see where we're heading. And that was really one of our graphic designers who just said, I want to make something. And he just put that together. So we're thankful um, that he would do that. We'll be working on that. If you have any other thoughts, um, please let us know. We want it. Uh, we want these tools to be something that you all feel comfortable using. So let's talk a little bit about um, fundraising and messaging. So with the P P2P, peer-to-peer -peer, um, fundraising, you know that when your friends raise money for your organization, it goes much further. And when they're able to tell their own personal story in working with you and why they work with you and why they support you, um, it brings other people along. So I would suggest that now start thinking about, you know, two to five or five to 10 um, individuals that might be willing to set up that simple page or use your template to set up that simple page and invite their friends through social media. They can also use the link to send out in an email. So it doesn't have to be on social media if some of the folks are not on there. So think about volunteers, think about board members, team members, family and friends, vendors. It's not, it's a it's an idea that not a lot of nonprofits think about. You bank with somebody, you use accountants and you use other entities to supply things, whether it's for events um, or rentals or whatever it might be, you might wanna think about inviting them to join you as well as corporate sponsors and anyone else out there to set up a P2P fundraiser. It's fun, it's super simple, and it's a way to get them involved. Think about matching dollars. Now, don't worry about getting a lot, even if it's just you know 100 or $200. The idea of incentivizing or sharing messaging that you've got matching dollars that donors could match and bring in more money for you is has been shown through giving days to really um, advance giving at a, at a higher level. So if you've only got a little bit, maybe you save it for October 6th to make sure that that's um, an incentive that drives in additional folks. And oftentimes you, you're gonna be able to exceed the matching dollars. We've Earth Gives Day into other efforts. Now I've talked with a lot of entities and organizations across the country, and I totally understand that some people are busy or they're wondering if it's going to impact end of year giving. This could literally help you kick off a capital campaign it could help up kick off your fall giving campaign. Earth Gives Day could then be replicated at um, Giving Tuesday and then end of the year. In fact, I've got Neon One looking at the opportunity to ask for a three-peat so that one of your donors could commit to doing a three-peat so that they would get then another email and then another email to duplicate their donation from Earth Gives Day to Giving Tuesday to end of the year. So we're looking at all kinds of ways that people will be ultimately be able to support you. Uh, weave it into any other events, integrate the UR link, URL link to your unique giving page everywhere. Put it at the bottom of an email signature, stick it in an email newsletter saying we're part of this new brand new initiative that's a nationwide effort to catalyze giving to environmental and climate focused nonprofits. We want you to join Americans across the country um, to be part of this. Now I want you to know, even in our inaugural year, we got donations from India and Canada. So just because it's US wide or nonprofits that have some level of a footprint in the US does not mean that donations can't come from anywhere. And what's really cool is some of the organizations that have already re-registered from last year have, have donors from all across the globe and they will be invited to also shop around and discover or other organizations. So I'm gonna get into this idea of a community of giving in just a second, but understand that weaving in your URL on your social posts and special emails, um, and especially as it nears when the leaderboards, as in the prize fund recipients, come into play, you're going to want to make sure 
that you've got the last donor, the last dollar to make sure that you win that prize fund at the very end. Um, moving on. So uh, recent statistics show that six in 10 Americans believe that something more needs to be done about climate change. And yet they are overwhelmed by understanding where to give. The competition, the climate deniers, competition of where's the best place to give is very confusing. Because even your missions are very unique, we've got folks that are focused on STEM education, wildlife rehabilitation, land conservancy, it goes on and on. So even within this sector of nonprofits, there's a lot of things to think about. So investing in this overall idea of philanthropy is actually the key action and some of the key messages. So we want to help you shift from confusing messages, which research is showing why people don't give to environmental nonprofits, to making it easy and simple. This is literally, Earth Gives Day is meant to put out a welcome mat to be kind of a first first place where people sort of dip their toes in and um, begin to, to give to organizations like yours. And donors want to know about your impact. So it's one thing to thank them. It's another thing to make sure you communicate impact. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that. So we are joining forces together to offer a welcome at. So some of the messaging early on about we're, we're part of Earth Gives Day. It's a really exciting new initiative to invite people in to start giving and catalyzing and advancing environmental nonprofit beyond environmental giving and philanthropy beyond just the 2%. And there's some millionaires and billionaires out there that are saying it's just not enough. So it's great to have some policy and it's great to have technology innovation we're saying that you already have boots on the ground, boats in the ocean, you're doing the work, you're on the front lines, you see it up close. Help us help you all to invite the others to invest in work that's already been proven and already been done. So <clears throat> think about breaking down the more complex subjects. What is an easy way to shape it? I'm here to help you in any way possible um, with any kinds of messaging that you might need help with. I'm sure there's tons of experts and some of you have large staff that may have this down pat, but if there are others who want um, to interplay with me, don't ever hesitate to email me or, or give me a ring and see what we can do to workshop a little bit of your messaging. Um, remember that you're not just thanking them, you're telling them what your impact does. So what Josh Abed had mentioned earlier, giving X amount helps us plant X trees to take additional kids out on the boat to discover, you know, the Bay Area and understand marine, you know, marine life and things like that. And thinking about some of the nonprofits that I interviewed a couple weeks ago, and we're going to be sharing more of their interviews and bits from their interviews to help um, gain a little bit of um, um, uh, a few more eyeballs, um, I would say. Um, remember to seek relationships, not dollars. So this was amplified in a recent uh, Neon One session. And I think it's very wise. You're not just chasing the dollars, you're literally building relationships. And just last week, I had the opportunity to present at a conference um, for entrepreneurs and leaders. And it was all about building connection, networks and relationships. So I love this. We are actually competing not for dollars, we're competing for attention. We're in the attention economy. And so how do we help people feel like they're part of something and affecting change? So this isn't just a giving day, it's a change making act is one of the lines that we'll have for you um, in the messaging. So thank them share the impact that they're making, thank them again, share the impact, connect the dots to what their investment in your mission is making possible. They want to be a part of that. Now the line, people like us do things like this is a, is a very famous line from a marketing whiz that I followed for years and years and years. He's written um, uh, 20 books, the most recent, he uh, globally curated the Carbon Almanac, and I have, um, I have uh, several copies 
um, to share and um, would love to, to get some to you, um, especially for those locally in Arizona, um, but would encourage you to go to your local bookstore and get it. It is all about systems change. And luckily, Earth Gives was invited in to be part of that community. So people like us, people like you do things like this. This weaves right into the messaging. Invite people in, welcome them in, connect them in. People want to belong. They want to feel like they're part of a solution. They want to feel like they're affecting change and they want to feel like they belong. So some of your messaging could center the donor, right? See them, you acknowledge what they're already doing. And there's turns of phrases and magical words. So if you haven't ever uh, discovered Robert Cialdini, who wrote The Science of Persuasion, I highly recommend that you Google and watch some of the YouTube videos about the science of persuasion, because I think it is a, a, a critical um, opportunity for you to use. People like us do things like this. We know that you give in so many ways. So you're acknowledging that they're very generous and they're paying attention. We hope that we are, well, Big Ben Conservancy, Wild, Wild Earth Guardians are one of the choices that you make when you give this fall. We know that you already do all these things, whether it's carrying reusable bags, drive an EV, shop wisely, and vote with, um, and vote with your dollars. So when you invest, we invite you to join the others. So you're already helping them understand that they are part of this community and you're inviting them in to join forces. Remember again, you're competing for their attention, not just for their dollars. Your words and messaging matters. A turn of phrase can really um, um, make a difference. So here's another example of another ad that we're going to be able to share with you that you'll be able to drop your own logo into and certainly your unique URL. But now it's time for questions. And because my technology isn't working that great, I'm going to stop sharing and uh, ask if anyone would like to ask questions of me or Josh Abed or offer up some of your own wisdom that might be useful for other nonprofits to um, utilize. Anyone? Hi. Hey. Quick question. Hey, Beth. Yeah, sure. So um, I cleaned all the mice. Oh, and, great. Um, Thank you so much. There were probably six total dead. Um, uh oh. One fancy. Oops. One fancy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm if anyone's on, not on mute, you might want to put on mute unless you've got a question to ask. I'm disturbing. I apologize. I didn't realize you were I didn't realize. Listen hey Beth, is that you at Wild at Heart? Yeah, sorry, I didn't know I was on mute. Sorry. No, it's okay. Did you have a question? No, 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 no. I had a volunteer that just come in and <laughs> we're discussing something. Sorry. Okay, got it. Anybody else have a question? Uh, I do, Rhonda. Uh, is it considered appropriate if someone, let's say, it's who is in my position, will actually put in a donation for my own organization? Is that considered appropriate? I mean, there's I do it all the time against, anyway, but yeah, <laughs> for yeah this there's nothing against thing. that. Absolutely nothing at all. So, Thank you. yeah. Anybody else? Grant? For the organizations that participated last year, did they usually just have like one fundraiser per organization or can, can you kind of talk us through that? Right. Well, um, I'm not sure last last year was a great example. We were just getting off the ground and, you know, very limited time uh, to do so and working. I mean, literally building the website from the ground up. And, you know, now we can at least go in and update the, the content and all that. So, Josh Abed, typically, um, what would you say for like Arizona Gives Day or some of the other giving days that Neon One supports? What would you say? Um, I mean, it really varies from organization to organization, but I have seen ones where they have, I mean, dozens because they have people who, you know, they have wide ranging supporters, they have board members that create them, they have, you know, former beneficiaries that create them. So there's not, um, as far as I know, there's not real hard numbers on like an average, but I've seen sort of the, it run the gamut of, you know, none to dozens. So. Gotcha. 
And what we're hoping to do, um, you know, part of our, our dream of not only making this year round um, as in doing thematic giving days, say around clean air week or whatever it might be, but to also, um, oh my gosh, where was I going with that? Okay, thematic giving days platform, sorry, having a brain fade. Um, that, let's see, I've just totally lost my train of thought. I'm so sorry, um, Grant. Uh, I, I apologize. Oh, now I know what it is. Okay, so that what we, it's the chicken and the egg um, situation. And that is how can we, and I've already reached out to some organizations. How can we reach out to um, groups that say are hiking clubs or other folks that, you know, you know, appreciate the environment in a different way and invite them to come in and create fundraisers on behalf of this initiative. And so you can think that way too. There could be groups within your area that do some things that aren't nonprofits, but they're groups of donors, potential donors, and they can invite them in, at least one influencer from that kind of group to come in and create a fundraiser for you. So that's definitely a strategy that you might want to think about. Josh, Ben, were you going to say something to that? No. no. Okay. Any other, any other questions? Okay. Somebody did ask um, uh, for some other, uh, a couple other questions. Let's make sure that I um, got to them. So what are the expectations? The expectation is really, it's really up to you. I mean, some of the longer term fundraiser um, uh, giving days do have deeper expectations. We're still, you know, in our infancy and um, working to scale this. Uh, we are working on all kinds of organizations um, to come in and amplify your messages, which reminds me about something. So the expectation is that you would register and that you would share it. The other expectation would be that this truly is a community. Our ethos is about we rise and fall together. And so by amplifying everybody, by lifting one another up, um, I think it makes you look good. I have coached politicians, executives, and others on using messaging that helps them amplify the others. And by doing so, it makes, it lifts your brand up. It lifts your messaging up. So I'm gonna use an example that I used even last year since Wild at Heart is actually on the phone. So Western Environmental Law Center, which was the first to register last year, was founded to protect the Northern Spotted Owl in Oregon. And now they uh, uh, cover the entire America West it's a group of attorneys, but that was their origin story. I happen to know a little bit about Wild at Heart because it's located here in Arizona and I've seen them out at different events and I've been fond of them. I happen to love owls. So I was very excited <laughs> that um, when Welk joined. So Welk is this large organization. Wild at Heart is a very small volunteer driven rehabbing animals, rehabbing ecosystems and making sure um, that raptors um, and other animals are taken care of. Imagine the play between the two organizations. Well, giving a shout out to Wild at Heart, saying, "Hey, we do this. We were founded based on, you know, um, uh, protecting the uh, the northern spotted owl." There are organizations like Wild at Heart in the state of Arizona who are taking care of these um, raptors. And so there are all kinds of groups that you can give to. When you give to one of us, you support all of us. And sort of that give and take, that kind of branding ethos and messaging is really what we're looking for. And what we hope to do in the future is the prize fund uh, categories are who brings in the most donors or dollars at small, medium, and large, and then overall. So you can win prize money in that's eight categories, but we hope and have been pitching companies and foundations to support um, prize fund dollars within specific areas or mission areas. And one, which would be a dream of mine, is to sp support 
organizations who help amplify one another, this idea of community and partnership and sort of working together. We need more modeling of that, I think, in the world. And that's part of what we're hoping to do um, with Earth Gives Day. But it could be specific to STEM organizations, folks that work specifically within um, you know, lakes, rivers, and streams, those that, um, you know, work on land conservancy, whatever it might be, um, that is our intent to, to build all kinds of leaderboards. So eventually the nonprofits can come in and win price fund, price fund dollars in, in all kinds of areas. Um, let's see if there's any other questions. I I think I've covered it. Is there anything else that I can do to help you or support you? Karen. Uh, just one quick question about the donations coming in. They can come in from all over the world, but they are coming in at, as US dollars. Yes, you know, I didn't have that, that issue. Um, Last year, that's interesting because the two from India, um, maybe they were Americans. I did not see that as an issue, but that, okay. that's a really good question. We'll um, okay. circle up. So part of that was um, probably because of the Rotary Group and you all made- That's me. Oh, that's you. So you're best <laughs> friend. So yeah, they, they came in as US dollars. Okay. And so because of Rotarians, I guess, living elsewhere, you got the exact amount that was donated based on U.S. dollars. Okay, great. Yeah. But right. really, really good question. Yeah, and I've already started reaching out to other Rotary groups because, see, here's an example, everyone else who's on this, where all of you could help introduce and amplify this work with Rotarians everywhere coming in and organizations like SRAG, which is based in Wisconsin. But I've been asked to speak at Rotary groups here in Arizona about Earth Gives Day. They can adopt and help get their uh, members involved to come on and give because Rotary, I think it was last year, added environmental sustainability as another pillar of their work. And they area attended focus. COP. They attended COP 26. They've been, you know, um, extraordinarily involved. So I'm going to invite you to make sure you follow Earth Gives on the four um, platforms: LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, if you want to follow follow, you know, other folks, and know that once your profile pages are set up or fundraising pages, it's literally one click and it gets shared to that, and people can write um, whatever they want to amplify that. But really great question, Karen, and we will circle back unless Josh Abed knows that answer. <laughs> I'm gonna assume it's yes dollars, but yes, we we should. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes it's the payment processing system, you know, more than anything. But anyway, um, yeah, we're excited. I hope that we're able to join today. Our team is out and about in the community today. So I'm representing all 10 regions. Sorry. That's right. <laughs> so it's great yeah. to have you. And George just yeah. emailed me, you know, uh -huh. about he's a, he was in the northernmost city in, in, on the earth. And yeah. he's not adventuring. <laughs> yeah. So one of our yeah. original board members, George Bash, brought in um, SRAG and yeah. Explorers Club out of New York City mm -hmm. and some other organizations. And he's going to have his nonprofit back in. But he just said, Good. Rhonda, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just adventuring to the Arctic. So um, know that I'm there with you. So it's great that there are some folks out there. Yeah. Um, helping us out and um, committed to helping grow this. So I look forward to getting the recording because I'll go ahead and share it with the rest of the team as soon as it comes. Great. Thank okay. you so much. And we Thank are you. working We are working on other um, organizations that do have a footprint with affiliates or chapters all across the country because we know that would give a lot of lift to everyone. And so that's what we're also working on doing. So are there any other questions? Otherwise, um, We'll wrap up and call it a day and you know how to reach me. I'm gonna go ahead and um, uh, stop recording and um, 